Welcome back to this next video of the FAQ video series on the Koenigs IP BAU 777. In this video we take a look at the parameters in the EDS6 and how they affect the visualization and the web server. I'm back here in the EDS6 in a little example project with the KNX IP router and the KNX IP bars. And first of all we want to take a look at the parameters here within the EDS6. So I go into the parameters and there first of all let us take a look at the general settings. In the general settings we can enable or disable the display synchronization object. So if I enable it here we can see that here we get a new group object. You can use this group object for example in combination with other Vinecell modules that have a display so that they turn on their display at the same time. Because with this object you get the information if the display has changed from the sleep mode to the active mode. And you can also write onto this object so that you can manually force the display to go to the active mode. Then next to it we have the security settings for the web server. So here you just set up username and password for the web server. And with that we already have finished the general page. So under services you can enable or disable the different services that the BAUS provides you with. So with send indications you can disable the functionality that notifications are sent from clients that are connected to the BAUS. Then we can also enable or disable the tooling interface. Then we can also enable or disable the different BAUS services. In this video series we will mainly focus on the web server. We can also disable that the BAUS responds to search requests. And the last setting here, menu edit, means that we can disable that there can be changes made to the parameters of the BAUS via the display of it. Then we have the buildings page. And the buildings and rooms page are relevant for the web server or the visualization within the web server of the BAUS. So there we can create our functions and the room structure. First of all on the building page here we can create functions that are not associated to any room. So for example informations from the weather station or informations from window and door contacts that we can enable here. We can give this page its own name. I will stick here to the default name building and then we can enable for example the door contact function or the smoke alert function. And you can see here we have up to 16 functions that we can activate. After activating a function we can also give it a name. So here for example door contact I will name it main door and here the smoke alert I will simply name smoke and fire for example. Now after creating such a function we can see that within the group objects page there are now two group objects created. Now here a state object for each of those two functions. Now before I go ahead and go to the rooms page I first of all want to download those informations onto the bars so that we can see what already has changed on the web server. Now therefore I click here on download and go to the web server. So here we are at the web server of the bars and as we saw in the parameters of the bars within the EDS the default settings here are admin admin and after signing in we are redirected here to the visualization and here we can now see the building page that we have just created and here we have the main door as well as the smoke and fire alarm. Now that's how we can create functions here to this buildings page. Now if we want to create multiple rooms we have to go to the parameters and here within rooms we can now create up to 24 rooms. So I will enable the first room here that we can see as a new entry here on the sidebar. And now we can give this room a name so for example kitchen and here we can also set up 16 functions. Now those are categorized into 10 basic functions which you can see here. 
And then we have six additional extended functions. Here we have some additional functions that we can use. Now, for example, I will enable the switching control and for example, the shutter control, which I will give a name. So light and shutter. And then let us create a second room. So I click here on the room two on enable. And here I will also create a new control, maybe the temperature control, which I will give the name temperature. And the room now is, for example, the living room. So now we have created two rooms, each with their own functions. And those functions we can also see here at the group objects. Here we now have those additional group objects for those functions. And if I start the download now, we should now see within the web server that we have two new rooms in our visualization. So first of all, I will sign in. And then indeed, we can see here we have two additional rooms, the kitchen with light and shutter control and the living room with the temperature. Now those were the settings within the EDS. Let us now take a look at the settings here within the web server. Now those were the settings within the EDS. Let us now take a look at the settings here within the web server. So first of all, under general, we can give the BAOS its own name and we can also change the physical address from here. And what we can also see is that we can see the programming mode, which we can also activate from here and if a bus connection is established. Then under network, we can see the network parameters and modify them as well as we can also see the MAC address. Next up, we have the email settings. Here we can set up the server that the BAO should use for sending email addresses. By default, Vineseal server is used. Otherwise, you can also specify here your own server. And down below, we also set up the recipients here. Then we have the date and time settings. Here we can, for example, enable an NTP server or we can input the time manually. And down below here, we can also use the bars as a date and time server for our KNX installation. How we can do this, we will see in another video. Then we have here the services page, which basically just is the same as in the EDS6. Here we have some additional server items, but they are primarily for the BAOS interface, which we won't take a look at for now. Then on the maintenance page, we can clear the cache and restart and reboot the BAOS. And you can also start the diagnostics routine from here. And the last page is the device update page. And here, as the name suggests, you start a device update. In my case, I am currently using the version 403, which you can also check on this page. So those were the settings of the BAOS in the EDS and in the web server.